Have you ever wondered how to hang one of these on one of these? Today we're going to hang a tube gate on T-posts and show you a great product that we found to be able to do that with. I don't know about you, but for me, putting in a big wooden post like this is definitely a lot more work than driving in a T-post. And these things have tripled in price over the last few months. I could get these for $7 at Tractor Supply about six months ago, and now they're 19. Let's go show you that great little bracket, that product that we found to be able to hang your tube gates or any gate off of a T-post. It's a real blessing to have found that thing. So here it is. Look at this cool bracket that somebody made. I could only find these from one seller on Amazon and I could not find it anywhere else on the internet. Maybe my search terms were wrong. Maybe I'm terrible at doing searches online, but to the dude who made this, uh, great job. And I think he's in Virginia. Anyway, I'll put the Amazon link in the description below because check this out. They slip over the top of your T-post and then they lock down like that. And then your pin is parallel to your T-post in this direction. The bottom one actually has a washer that rides on it so your gate hinge doesn't just kind of mar into the bracket itself and it, it turns smoothly. So it's got a washer on it and I'll show you how to put it all together. But look at how easy that just sits on. Also, one of them has a locking pin that kind of drives through here and, and locks it in place. So we've never had a gate in this side of our garden. You can see we've got one on the other side and we have the big one in the front. But we need access to this side because our new greenhouse is gonna go over here and I need to go back and forth between the garden and the greenhouse. So that's the reason for it. And we've got this great arbor that we built here. If you didn't see that, go check out that video up here on how to build a great kiwi and grape arbor arched for your garden. Let's get moving and let's cut through our fencing. Makes me nervous to do so, but we need to do it. So we've already got two T-posts set in the garden holding up the fence, they're not spaced properly to receive the tube gate. So we're gonna have to drive two more T-posts, but I need to cut this uh, wire fencing here for the garden straight down the middle between the two existing T-posts. So many gates come with pins already. So you will not need these because we already have our specialized pins. So you can save these for another project. So most of these tube gates that you can find are 44 inches wide. And with the addition of the hinges that come with it, it extends it out to 45 and a quarter. Well, you need to dry fit things together before you pound in your T-posts or you're gonna be moving your T-posts. Everything together with these pins in their locked position comes to 46 inches to this edge of the T-post. So make sure you take note of that and put your T-posts exactly 46 inches apart so your gate can close flush with the other T-posts. So we're at 46 inches for our gate and hinges in between this edge of this T-post. So make sure you measure you know, 23 out from wherever your center is and try to stay with your T-post driver try to stay as straight as possible. It's a little difficult sometimes, but you'll get the hang of it. They want to, they have a tendency to twist when you're hitting them in. Try and twist them straight right before that flange goes in and you should be good to go. These are six foot tall T-posts. Make sure you leave four feet out of the ground. If you drive them in a little too deep, you can always pull them up and do it again, but you've got an adjustable hinge here on your gate. Usually it sits above this top bar, but you can't adjust it since it's just for a garden. Okay, challenging part here, we've got our fencing. We need to get it kind of uh, wrapped around where our hinges are gonna go. So we're gonna need to get these on first and set them in relatively the spot that they're gonna go. And then we're gonna wrap the fence around and connect it in one or two spots with one of these uh, wire uh, fencing connectors for T-posts, you all know these. From there, we need to adjust the, uh, the hinge 
posts here, set the gate, and then we can connect the rest of the fence around the T-post with these once these are adjusted. But I'm gonna slide these on. I'm just gonna put one of these up at the top to hold it. So we have our hinge post connectors slipped down on the T-post and in relatively the spot that we want them. We have our fencing connected to our T-post at the top and the bottom with our wire connectors here. And now we can wrap our fencing around and determine where we need to cut it out so there's smooth operation of this whole uh, hinge mechanism here. So here we go, we got the gate set, the fence wrapped around, the hinge pins, the brackets set on the T-post. There's one last thing to do, and I'm not exactly sure how it works per the instructions. I'm gonna do it how the instruction shows. I've got this little aluminum nail here, and this is what they call in the instructions a locking pin. I'm gonna put it in where they tell me to. I really don't see how it works, but let's do it for you anyway. So you can see our top bracket with the pin here is starting to twist a little bit. It's not slipping at all, so that's good because it's locked in from slipping down any further than past this little nub right here. It tells me to put the pin, the locking pin, and just set it in right there. There's a lot of play in there, and I'm not sure how that keeps it from slipping down. It probably locks it in a position here where this top pin is at an angle a little bit, but this, yeah, it keeps it from slipping down, but it doesn't keep it at a flat and level, uh, or flat and level to the ground. So that's a little disappointing. Maybe I can put something in there with a little bit bigger head that's going to push against the side of our T-post here and keep it from moving back and forth and thus twisting like this. All right, we're in. We're locked in. Our pin's in, we've got both T-posts in, and I'm gonna lock it to this one. Now, the better or the straighter that you can drive your T-posts in, the better the whole system's gonna work. And I'm not great at it because we've got some weird soil, so it's not rocky, but it's clay soil. So it's kind of driving this, uh, driving the T-post all over the place. But it's pretty good, and I love these little brackets. And like I said, it's the only one that I found out there to work. So thanks for the guy who made it. Again, link in the description below. So if you're wondering now how I'm gonna keep things from getting in and through the gate, let me show you what we did to our other gate on the other side. So here we are with our tube gate on the other side of the garden. It is the same size tube gate. It is attached to wood posts. We have got our half inch galvanized hardware cloth on the exterior to prevent animals, small animals, from getting inside. This helps a lot with rabbits. What we did was we overlapped it on the bottom and created a threshold that drags along the ground. In front here is the same as the other side. So that hardware cloth extends out probably about a foot from the threshold on the bottom, and that prevents anything from digging underneath. Now, could a rabbit push? Probably not. So I've never had a rabbit in the garden, but I also have great barn cats and I've seen them walking around with rabbits in their mouths. So have some barn cats as a backup to any fencing you have. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, put it in the comments section below. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you how to brace fence posts fast and easy. We love you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.